Economic Development Commission. Um, on the Economic Development Commission, we have Salvatore Sharenzia, Nicole Porter, uh, Paul Simons, Jennifer Anderson, Stefan Rusev, uh, Will Mason, Jennifer Dayton, who's here as well, and Jen Strunk. Uh, the, the purpose of today is to really have a roundtable discussion <laughs> with uh, not only the businesses in town, but um, a lot of the resources that are available to them. Uh, this is our first one, so bear with us. Um, just to give you a little background of what we've been doing on economic development over the past few years is uh, we created a, um, a slogan for North Stonington. It's called the, the Heart of Southeastern Connecticut. And we've been uh, producing marketing material for that. Um, we've also worked on a business beautification program in town. Now, not all of these things went flying with um, and got a lot of buy-in from some of the businesses, but that's the reason for this discussion tonight. Um, so we started a beautif business beautification um, program where we were trying to work with local businesses on beautifying their um, properties, storefronts um, with uh, mixed expenses covered by the town and also the businesses. Um, like I said, we worked on our marketing material with um, handouts and flyers to, to work to recruit businesses in here once things open back up and um, for any kind of trade shows that might be happening. During COVID, we worked on flyers for local businesses. Uh, we provided radio ads about shopping local. We organized the village co-op with, uh, luckily with Chinook, River Brewery willing to help us host that. Um, and what that did is it, it put local farmers products out there in a safe and clean environment and in town where uh, residents didn't have to go far to get the, the goods they needed. Now this, this happened in the start of COVID um, when people weren't traveling as much or they weren't leaving the town and, and there was a lot of unknowns back then. Um, so that, that happened in a rapid pace. We got that together um, and it, and it lasted for about six months. Um, we also created mask wearing signage, provided that to local businesses um, from the, the start of COVID. Um, when sanitizer was in short supply, we worked with um, Graysale to provide sanitizer for local businesses. And we, we delivered that to the businesses that were staying open, um, especially in the, the food service industry and uh, a lot of the convenience stores, uh, the truck stop. We, we tried to get it to everybody that had a storefront that was opened during that time. Uh, we worked with planning and zoning regarding the outdoor dining for restaurants and, and Juliet was instrumental in, in actually visiting the restaurants and coming up with plans of where they can put um, tables. Um, Mike worked, helped with the highway department, getting them on board to, to um, put up Jersey barriers for safety in some of those um, restaurants. And we'd also work with planning and zoning on relaxing the signage regulations in town, which were um, really helpful to the businesses that were open to help them attract businesses during this time. Um, as you know, signage has always been a, a conversation in town, but with Juliet and planning and zoning, we were able to work with them to come up with a, a, a lax policy on that and um, to lower the enforcement while the governor's orders were in place. Um, North Stonington over the past 10 years have still been number one and two in the Connecticut uh, Economic Index for growth. And the, the past, other than this year, I think the past three years, we ranked top out of the 169 towns in the state. A few of the things we are working on now um, and in the future, are we're working on a business directory to be able to send out to local businesses, I mean, to residents, not only to have a digital version, but actually a printed out version, which the last time we did one with the Business Association was down in, in 2014. Some of the things that we see is we have a lot of home-based businesses as well in North Stonington. So it's hard for residents to know the services out there um, and the local businesses that provide those services, especially for the home-based um, occupation. So that's part of the reason for the directory. Um, 
we've been talking about having business showcases and open houses for once things open back up for residents to understand what some of these local businesses do and the services they provide and allow them to visit those businesses. Um, Juliet, EDC and planning zoning, are, we're looking into a, a route two business walkway basically to open up the rest, the newer restaurants on route two um, with a walking path um, for the outside dining that is now there. And just recently, uh, we applied for federal funding to, to help create a workforce development center um, in North Stonington. Jennifer Dayton's been uh, the lead on that, working with select, first selectman Ergo and the other selectmen in, in trying to get that funding through um, the federal government. Um, we also, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, we did a shop, share, and win initiative to help market North Stonington businesses to surrounding communities because as we, we discuss things, we, we realize that North Stonington can't, businesses can't survive just on North Stonington residents. We need to embrace the surrounding communities and how do we recruit residents to, um, surrounding residents, town residents to, to utilize our businesses. Um, so that was the premise of the Shop, Share and Win um, campaign. So with that, like I said, we are limited on time. So I wanted to give you a quick rundown on what we've done, where we are and what we're looking to do in the, the near future. Um, so next up, I'd like to introduce uh, Megan Gilbert from the chamber uh, to introduce herself. And she is up next. Thanks, Megan. Thank you, Brett. Thank you all for having us here today. Um, I do wanna recognize that our president and CEO, Tony Sheridan is also on the line as well as our membership manager, um, Jane Davis. I will give a very brief overview, same as Brett did, about what the chamber has as resources for the businesses. Um, and Tony, certainly, if he wanted to add anything, I will let him do that, but I will be brief. Um, I also want to recognize and thank uh, for selecting Mike Ergo, who's on the line with us, and Representative Greg Howard. Um, we appreciate you taking the time to, to join with us today. I know Heather Summers was also on the list. I don't know if I see her in the Zoom room, but if you're here, welcome and thank you. Um, so the Chamber of Commerce of Eastern Connecticut, our, uh, our mission is to create and maintain a positive business climate that meets the needs of our members by supporting economic development uh, and growth in the region. Uh, what this actually means is that we're here to serve our members. Um, our 11 staff members are an extension of your team um, and we support your goals. Uh, we're the region's largest chamber. Um, we do work collaborati collaboratively with other um, town chambers. And so that's a good reciprocal relationship that we have with um, Greater Mystic Chamber or perhaps Ocean Community. Um, we are all about making connections, um, fueling collaboration, supporting community growth and um, uh, building economic development in uh, Eastern Connecticut, New London and Wyndham counties. Um, while we may be physically apart due to COVID-19, we are still creating opportunities to interact, um, to find and share resources, and to support your mission. Um, a couple of the highlights on the ways that you can engage with us as a small business or a nonprofit. Um, we're most known probably for events and for networking. Uh, we do have an ongoing schedule of events centered on networking, which will continue to be virtual for the next couple of months. Um, we are looking forward to gathering in person, but Either way, our events are a great way to meet new people, um, to share your successes and challenges with your peers, a lot like we're doing tonight, um, and to drive visibility for your business or your organization. Um, we're also still hosting our ribbon cutting or milestone celebrations um, and become broadcasting them uh, across Facebook Live and our other social media channels. We're actually reaching um, sometimes more people than would be able to gather in person. So it's still there. We're still trying to celebrate good news as is appropriate. Um, so contact us if that's something that's of interest to you and your business. Um, we are also known for marketing and sharing information. We have a robust communications uh, system. We have lots of different outlets between email, social media, and our website. Um, we have a list of over 8,000 contacts with whom we share our news and our members' news. Uh, so we encourage our members to share press releases, job openings. You can submit RFPs, upcoming events, um, anything that's going on in your realm, we want to share that news. Um, we have free and low cost opportunities for um, sharing all of that type of information. We also use our communications more, and more now than ever um, as a tool to collect and clarify and disseminate all of the guidelines and updates that are coming down from the federal and state levels. 
there's a lot of information flying at you. So we do our best to collect that and make it clear um, and give the businesses what they need to know right now. Um, we've also partnered with the Eastern Regional Tourism District as of last year as an administrative partner. Uh, a lot of people might know that as Mystic Country, that might be the more familiar phrase, but um, we have a specific industry newsletter for anyone who's in hospitality. Um, and we're excited also to be organizing a grant program with them uh, where any hospitality businesses can collaborate on a campaign and the district will uh, match your investment one-to-one. -one. So let's say a farm, a restaurant, and a hotel or a bed and breakfast come together and they each only bring $250 to the table. Your campaign budget overall now becomes $1,500 aided by um, the grant from the district. So we're excited for that. Um, they've done that once before and had really good results. So please keep in touch with us if that's something that would interest you. Um, we are also, um, sorry, excuse me, um, conscious of your time and money being very valuable to you. So we want to make sure that your membership works for you from your desk or from your kitchen or wherever you're working now. Um, so we have about 1400 members on our roster. So we have an online business directory. I'm excited to hear that Brett is working on that and the EDC is working on that as a project. Um, we have all of those businesses listed online. Your members can have an online listing. You can include, include photos, logos, um, and our website ranks really well on Google. So we're excited to offer that to you. You can log in anytime to change that listing. Um, more importantly, you can reach out and contact fellow members from within the portal. So there is a, a robust amount of information in there. Um, you're also eligible for cost savings programs, group health insurance, um, shipping, printing, office supplies, email marketing, and a number of other things. So we try to make it um, both active and passive in terms of what benefits you can get. Um, and to wrap up, it's a great time to join the chamber. We know that everyone is sensitive and businesses have been hit hard this past year, but through our unique relationships with some of the area's largest employers, um, we are able to offer financial assistance for those who've been impacted by COVID-19. So don't be afraid to reach out um, to learn about joining the chamber. Jane Davis is on this call. Shoot her a chat. Uh, give her a call if you'd like. Um, and if you're already a member, that's great. Thank you. Um, and if financial issues are causing you problems where you think you might have to drop or anything like that, or you can't afford you know, some of the programs we've been doing, we do our best to keep everything very low cost, but we are here to support you and be flexible. Um, so please get in touch with us, chamberect.com, or give our office a call, and we will be here to help you. Um, so again, thank you for having us, and we're happy to partner tonight. This meeting is recorded, by the way. It's on my Zoom, so we will share that with the EDC and get that out to anyone in case you missed any information. Thanks. Thanks, Megan, and thank you guys in the chamber for hosting this for us on the back end tonight and helping us promote it. We really appreciate the support on it. Um, Next up from sector, we have Nancy and Sherry. I'm not sure who's going to talk first, but just to let you know, um, sector gave us a presentation a few meetings ago on all the services that they help provide um, and the resources they, they have for businesses. And it's overwhelming the, the amount that they can do and the support they've given. Um, I actually talked to one business today that just got a grant through them or some financing through them recently. Um, I guess it took three tries, but uh, they let us know that three times was a charm. Uh, Juliet helped them with that, and she they couldn't make it here tonight, but she was very thankful for the work that Sector did to, to help and thankful for Juliet for helping um, guide her in that direction. So I will turn that over, turn it over to Sherry and uh, Nancy now. Thank you. Thanks, Brett. I'll, I'll start off. And uh, you're right, Juliet is a superstar. And uh, Brett, thank you so much for inviting us back. Um, I, I did prepare a PowerPoint, but I don't want to bore you to death. So I'll send that to Juliet uh, to send out uh, in the interest of time. And I'll just go through some, uh, some highlights. Um, so Sector is the Southeastern Connecticut Enterprise Region, and we're the region's economic development organization as authorized by the state, by DECD and OPM and authorized federally by EDA, which is the Economic Development Administration. Um, and our main charge, there's two main charges under that designation. Um, one is to write and deploy the region's comprehensive economic development strategy, kind of like the strategic plan for economic development for the region. Do that every five years. Um, our most recent one was nationally recognized as a best practice, which was pretty cool. Um, and our next one is due in 2022. So we'll be starting to work on that over the summer. And we look forward to engaging as many of you as, as are interested in as possible. 
Um, the sense is really important because that allows us to tap into EDA funding. So EDA is the major source of economic development, infrastructure, um, and technical assistance funding for the region um, or for the nation, actually. And in order for a municipality, for example, to tap into EDA funding, the project has to tie into a SEDS and the region's economic development organization has to um, advocate for it. Um, so Jennifer knows, I've uh, certainly worked a lot with Jennifer Dayton on her IT project. Uh, we produce a lot of data for her, um, help connect her. She's done the massive lion's share of the work, um, but that's an example of the type of things we do for our member municipalities. Um, we also provide a lot of customized data. Um, we do site finding. Um, right now we're working with a developer in, um, in the area who's looking for a major site to expand his business. Um, and we do uh, regional marketing. We're working um, with a couple of publications um, on a regional prospectus. Um, that's really gonna be a marketing tool to help bring or retain businesses in our region, which um, all our member municipalities will have access to as well. Um, I'll briefly go over a couple of specific programs that we have. Um, so Brett mentioned our uh, lending program. Uh, we do small business lending and it's a unique kind of small business lending. It's for those businesses that aren't quite bank ready. Um, so in North Stonington, for example, it could be an agriculture business that banks have a hard time understanding um, how to understand the financials and how to um, how to value a project in typical bank terms. So we do a lot of that agriculture, aquaculture. Um, over the last year, we funded um, a cattle uh, business. Um, we have funded um, a brewery. We're just doing a second one right now. Um, so. Um, if they're not bank ready by virtue of the type of business they are, maybe the owner has had some credit uh, issues in the past, or it's a young business and it just doesn't have the track record now that's needed. We do that alone and we do that in partnership with banks. So we're working on a deal right now. It's a, about a, a $3 million deal. Um, the bank is willing to do about $2 million of it, but there's a gap. Um, and so we're helping fill in that gap, um, uh, funding some working capital and some equipment. Um, all of our loans um, receive ongoing technical assistance, and you can imagine during COVID times that was especially important. Um, and because of our, um, you know, management of our funds, we were able to um, defer payments for almost half of our loan portfolio this year for at least three months at a time. Um, so that meant that businesses got to breathe a little bit during COVID. Um, and we weren't, you know, demanding payment. We have one business that actually is going into their ninth month of deferral um, and uh, not being penalized for it at all. Um, we leverage federal funding. So through the CARES Act, we received about $2 million in additional lending funds that we were given two years to get out. Um, we feel we're actually almost expended fully after one year. Um, so we'll be applying for additional loan funding. Um, we have our old money still though, so we have plenty of money still to lend. Um, and the, another unique thing is that all of our funding is recapitalized back into the region. So we did a, a grant for, um, or a loan for the Guard Arts Theater, for example, it was $5 million and that's been recapitalized into $20 million in additional funding into the region. Um, so give us a call uh, if you're interested in any of our lending programs. Um, we also do the Procurement Technical Assistance Center for the region, and that means we help businesses become government contractors. Um, free service, um, and uh, remember that the government buys everything. You know, we have businesses in our roster that sell chocolate to commissaries or uh, make scooters. One guy even makes a skateboards, as well as the, um, you know, what you'd regularly think of as manufacturing businesses. We've also helped municipalities with their uh, grants.gov registration, SAM registration, all of those registrations you need to do to become a government contractor, including seeking out socioeconomic certifications, you know, getting registered as a, a women-owned business, a small business, veteran-owned business. Um, and uh, we provide um, bid support uh, to all those businesses. So business registers with us for PTAC, they start getting notices of bids that are appropriate for their business. And we help them write their capability statements to compete for those bids. So again, another free program. Um, and I, I will give Juliet all of this contact information to share with all of you. Um, a new program for us that we're really excited about is um, we have a, a subcontract with UConn to have a small business development center counselor in our office. So again, another free service to help small businesses 
with business planning, financial planning, marketing, finding capital. Um, she just started in June and has already um, helped her clients find almost $4 million in capital. Um, market research, financial analysis, disaster and disruption preparedness, very important during COVID. So helping businesses figure out how to pivot, helping them apply for PPP loans, for idle loans, all those you know acronyms that the government threw out. Right now she's helping uh, restaurants with the restaurant recovery grants. And um, she's helping um, a couple of theaters with the, um, the theater grants that just came out, the shuttered venues grant. So again, a free service, um, we're happy to provide that in the region. Um, and uh, you know anything that a business might need, even if you're just thinking of starting a business you know, helping you walk through what that might look like. Um, and uh, the last thing, I'll turn this over to Sherry real quick. Uh, we received additional funding to help with economic recovery. A lot of that is focused on municipalities and helping them with what their needs are for recovery. You know, we're sitting on a lot of town recovery um, teams. We're sitting on the region's recovery team. Um, we are um, helping businesses. So some of the one of the things that we're looking at is some data tools. And you mentioned a, a business um, directory. We'll probably be purchasing a um, subscription to Hoover's. Um, and that's one of the things that's very expensive, but it's one of the things that we could help our municipalities with in terms of unearthing the businesses that are in their town. Um, so uh, that's a little bit of what we're doing. And Sherry, I'll let you um, cover a little bit more as well. Hmm. Thank you, Nancy, and good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for having us. It's nice to see some familiar faces in the group today. Um, so I'll just touch on a couple of, of high level things that we're doing under the, uh, the grant that I was hired uh, for. And so uh, we're working with our municipalities, as Nancy has mentioned, a couple of the things that we've done is we've worked with the city of New London to produce a webinar on their foreign trade zone uh, expansion. They were able to expand that to uh, include all of Southeastern Connecticut. And so we wanted to help them get the word out and we uh, did a webinar for them on that. Uh, the city of Norwich has asked us to help them uh, with their underwriting for some community uh, um, block grants that they're giving out to their small businesses to assist them in paying their rent and paying their utilities. And so they've tasked us with um, being the underwriter for those grants. Um, they're a little bit short staffed, so we're, we're helping them out. Um, we're working now on uh, a webinar to talk about SiteFinder. SiteFinder is an online platform uh, where commercial realtors can post their available properties. Municipalities can also post their available properties. Um, and developers uh, can also post on this platform their needs, what they're looking for. And so we are uh, helping um, our municipalities and the state of Connecticut make sure that everyone is aware of this particular platform and encourage people to use it. One of the things that we learned in this process is that municipalities are allowed to post their um, properties at no charge. This is a change that uh, just came about a few months ago, uh, where before municipalities had to pay to be a member of SiteFinder. Now you don't need to, and you can post your properties for free. So that's really important information for all of our municipalities to know about. Um, Nancy mentioned the marketing prospectus that we're working on for the region. Uh, we just embarked on the uh, beginning project for that, which is to um, partner with regional entities and uh, find out the behavior patterns for people that are visiting our websites, um, looking at particular keywords to find out why people are coming to our region and why they're uh, looking for information. So we just started that uh, process with our marketing firm. And then a couple of other things on the EDA grant work that we're doing. Uh, we're working with Wyndham to uh, look for an EDA grant uh, for a, a food incubator that they're starting up there. Um, of course, we're working with the city of New London on uh, potential funding for their, um, their ports, the same with the town of Stonington. We're working with the Eastern Chamber uh, on a potential incubator grant. Um, and then we are just getting over the finish line with a, a grant application to EDA to fund a feasibility study for the Crystal Mall in Waterford. I'm sure you've all heard uh, about the, the mall and the change in their uh, business plan and possibly closing. Um, so we're working with them on a feasibility study. Um, so those are just a few of the things that are on our plate right now. Uh, and you know, Nancy and I are happy to take any questions if you have any. 
or just be available for um, additional comments or questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sherry and Nancy. We appreciate that. Um, so Heather signed on and, and Greg is here, but they are both in session, so they're flipping back and forth. Um, so Heather actually asked if Greg can go first. And um, I think if Greg chimes on now, unless he's currently, there he is. I'm uh, here. To welcome Representative Howard. Thank you, everybody. Sorry that I'm back and forth. I'm in the middle of a session as well. So I'm trying to multitask, but thank you so much for having me. And I am back and forth and paying attention and listening and certainly uh, supportive of the economic development in town. Um, I don't really have a lot to add. I've been mostly listening to what the goals are and, and the avenues. Um, we did just get the governor's proposal for the American Rescue Plan, which includes uh, an awful lot for economic development, specifically allocating 160 million from the um, state fiscal relief fund and 97 million from the coronavirus capital projects fund to support efforts that should mitigate some of the economic impact of the, of the pandemic throughout the state. Uh, he's also gonna couple that, he proposed to couple that with funding that's already identified in the EDAP, the Economic Development Action Plan, which is about $315 million in, in bond funds, 164 million in tax credits and uh, 100 million or so in state small business credit initiatives. Uh, with another 938 million in private funding. So the proposal is targeted to, to small businesses, which as you all know, make up about 99% of our economy. And certainly as, as many of you have probably noted as well, the, the launch of online gaming, iGaming and sports wagering um, is, is coming up very quickly and uh, before the house floored and that's anticipated to pass. So well, that's important too, because when that happened in New Jersey, while you may think that uh, initiative like that would, would cause less people to show up to the brick and mortar establishment. In fact, in New Jersey, they found the opposite, that the, the amount of people coming to their casinos increased, which of course is, is great for the people traveling through North Stonington um, up on Route 2 and the economic development and what the, you know, the effect of the tourism will have on the local economy. So, um, so that's sort of some good news coming out of Hartford, uh, relevant to small business and economic development. And um, with that, if they, I'm happy to answer any questions. And if anyone needs to get a hold of me, Brett knows exactly how to do that. And uh, the first selectman does as well. So by all means, I, I'm accessible as any of you. And if there's uh, legislative initiatives that help you or your business or the economic development of the town, uh, please make sure to call them to my attention so we can work through them. Thanks, and thanks Brett for inviting me. It's 6.30. Thanks, Greg. Uh, Senator Summers, I would love to introduce you to the group and have you say a few words. Uh, good evening. My name is Heather Summers. I'm the senator from the 18th district. I have the honor of representing from Groton all the way to Plainfield along the Rhode Island border. And um, I've been listening in and out. We are in caucus today, getting ready for session for the next couple of days. So um, even though I'm listening, um, I'm running between three different meetings. So I, I wanted to just touch base with you and I don't really want to talk at you. I'm here to listen, to hear what you have to say, to see if there's anything that we can do for you. There are quite a few bills um, in the legislature right now going through the process that we don't feel are very helpful for small businesses. Um, I can identify all those to Brett and he can um, pass them along. <coughs> um, there will be a lot of conversations um, on them. One of them is the, of course, you've, I'm sure you've heard about the additional property tax for business owners of businesses that um, are valued at $430,000 or above. That is a concern of many small businesses here in the state of Connecticut. Um, the governor has um, put out his budget and um, the appropriations committee uh, voted on a budget that it does include some good things. Um, there are also some other things that are, are maybe not so good in certain people's eyes. Um, one of the things that we are really keen on, we just passed it in a bill um, out of appropriations is to sure up the unemployment fund, which is absolutely depleted at this point. So we would like to make sure that some of the CARES money is going for that unemployment fund. If not, all of our wonderful business owners will be getting a nice big assessment um, to try to sheer up that fund, which at this time is not something that many of our small businesses can absorb. Um, there has been many initiatives for funding that have come through um, EDAPT, which is the small business. It's supposed to be helping small business. There's hundreds of millions of dollars in there um, that are coming to the state to help small businesses in different areas. Um, there's also the recovery funds that are available. And um, we also have 
we'll be hearing shortly in the house, maybe even today, um, some sports gaming, eye lottery and um, sports betting, which has added significant revenue in other states that it has uh, passed, not only just to the casino, but to the surrounding areas uh, for um, you know, the other businesses that are located within the area that the uh, casinos are. So we're hopeful that that will generate a significant amount of um, income. Um, some of it is designated to certain areas like tourism. Uh, one of the bills that came out of um, the Appropriations Committee allocates $15 million towards tourism, um, will, which will be split between tourism and um, the Arts Council. That's a good start. Um, this iGaming bill, if it passes, also designates about $20 million for tourism and another 10 for the arts and culture aspect. And as we know, tourism is a big driver in our particular area. So we will see how those things move through the process. Another thing for economic development you may be interested in is there is a zoning bill, which is um, in 13 different bills within the legislature. This zoning bill changes the way local control um, works with zoning. And some people feel that it's a and state overreach. Other people embrace the idea. Um, but the basic gist of the zoning bill within the 13 bills is that each town would establish its transportation center. That could be a train station, a bus stop. Um, it could be also um, a, probably a, a ferry landing. Um, and around that area is a zone that's carved out, which is a half a mile radius in which um, the local zoning would no longer apply. And this would be in the support of trying to create more affordable housing throughout the state of Connecticut. Um, that bill is very controversial. It's in planning and development. It's actually in a public health bill. It's in a transportation bill. It's all over the place. We have heard from our uh, economic development uh, committees throughout the state and also our planning and zoning committees with wide viewpoints on this particular bill. So if that's not something that you are familiar with, um, I can certainly send those bills to Brett and he can distribute them to all of you to take a look at and give us your input. Um, there has been hearings on all of these bills, but those are a few things that I think um, would, could really affect economic development um, in towns. And if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them or you can always email me and I will try to get back to you. So I don't know if anybody has any questions, but I just wanted to say hello and thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Senator Summers. And then uh, quickly, we'll go to Juliet Hodge, who is our planning zoning development officer here in town. Most of you know her. Um, right, I won't add a lot. I'm not the big bad zoning official that everybody makes me out to be, I promise. <laughs> no, most Where's of you have. Um, more importantly, I. Uh, you know, I did used to work at Sector, so I'm very familiar with all of their programs. They're wonderful to work with. The company that uh, it was Farm True, Nancy, that finally got their MVP grant. Yay. Um, so I, I'm here to help in a number of ways. And, you know, I'd also point out that a lot of the members of the Economic Development Commission themselves are business owners. So you can, um, you know, contact any one of them as well. And, you know, if you're not comfortable coming to town hall, you can talk to them at any time and express your concerns and whatnot. And, you know, they can bring those back to me uh, because I do have so many different roles that that's actually an advantage in some respects, because what I hear from you, I can bring directly to planning and zoning and try to get a zone, uh, you know, something in the zoning changed, which uh, we, we are all usually pretty successful at. Um, I've also worked with uh, the chamber during my time at sector and during the time that we uh, prepared the said so you know, essentially everybody in the region is, is um, comfortable with, comfortable talking to, comfortable working with, and they're wonderful people with wonderful resources. So don't, don't hesitate. It, it, you know, it could be something small, it could be something big, but that's, that's what we're here for. So I'd rather hear from everybody here. Um, so I won't say any more. Thanks, Julia. And just let everyone know that Juliet is very open to, to really sitting down and, and going through um, some of the uh, issues that businesses might have in town and how we can work with the boards and commissions to, to help alleviate some of the concerns that businesses have. Um, she is very busy, but she always takes the time to, to work with businesses. So we're lucky to have her. Um, it's no 636. Come in, so. <laughs> so basically we're here to hear from the businesses that are on the call as well as um, the, the commission members that might have some 
questions or concerns. But before we get too into it, I'd like to open it up for questions from anybody that um, on anything they've heard so far um, from anyone that has spoken. If you do, uh, you can just unmute, might be the easiest way, or raise your hand. Any questions so far? I'm trying to switch screens to see if I see anything. Julia, do you see anything out there? I don't. Okay. So some of the, the things that we'd like to ask the business owners that are here are what can the town, what can economic development do to, to help you? Um, we, we've had those, some of the initiatives that we've talked about, not all of them have gone over really well. Um, and communication is always an issue. So, so Mike Christie, I'm looking at you because you popped up on my screen right in front of me. Do you, what would be the best way to reach, I mean, there's a lot of landscaping businesses in town. There's a lot of um, companies like yourself that, that provide services. What's the best way to reach you guys to, to let you know of these programs? Well, I, I think you're, you're on the right path uh, doing this. Um, you know, to be honest with you, uh, I, I wasn't going to, you know, uh, come on tonight, but, you know, uh, Juliet sent me a, an email and just let me know what was happening. And, you know, I think getting more involved or getting us more involved in, in trying to come up with a, a way to, like you said, communicate. And um, it's, it's tough. This town is, um, it's a small town, but it, it's, and it's a great town. Um, and there are many people that do a lot of the same stuff. Um, which I which I've found um, that's good and bad, uh, in my opinion. But um, you know, I, I think if if there, you know, you guys tried that. What you said earlier it was like a booklet, right? Like you guys did like a booklet with uh, businesses and stuff like that, right? And um, I'm not sure if I ended up getting in that or not. I don't remember, but um, you know, something like that, where or a digital version of that, I guess, would be would be obviously key now. Um, I know back in, what do you say, 2014, um, yeah. there weren't as many people maybe online as are in, uh, now, but I think that you guys are doing a great job at, at, at what you're doing. Um, I, I don't know if other towns do this or not, but I, I know that through COVID and everything, uh, the way that you guys responded to people and businesses in town, I, I think was incredible. Uh, uh, you know, a signage and, and, and what you guys put on the forums about, you know, the getting the products locally. I thought that was, I thought that was excellent. So, um, you know, I, I think keep doing what you're doing in, in a way, because I, th I think that this type of uh, forum or this uh, activity is, is the best way to do things. Um, and yeah, this, this town's definitely growing. Um, you know, I've noticed it and, uh, with that comes more, like I said, more people doing the same thing, but that's okay. You know, um, everybody can stay busy and, uh, you know, I'm always willing to help out anybody that, that needs help. Um, you know, and, uh, I, I think it's a, like I said, great town and I uh, wish I had more to offer, but, uh, that's it for now, Brett. No, I appreciate it. And we will be reaching out to you because we, uh, are reaching out to some of the local, I don't know if Julie had already mentioned it, but part of that, um, route two business uh, restaurant stroll walkway that we're, we're looking at. We're trying to get some landscapers involved to help and, you know, um, yeah, local yeah. I, I would love to do that. I, you know, I mean, uh, like I said, I, I, I did a little thing down here at the end of route 49. It was kind of a crazy situation. I forgot what, what that was for, but like yeah, a little, pocket planting, park. yeah, pocket park. That's it. Um, but it was a tough thing with the state and, and where, you know, who's then they drove all over it and it kind of got nutty, but um, you know, I, I, uh, yeah, I'd be willing to help or, or, you know, I'm sure other people in town would too. So. All right. Well, thank you, Mike. No problem. And I would mention uh, something that the housing uh, commission is also thinking about that might affect a couple of the people on, on this call. You know, we're thinking about uh, something to hand out to new, new homeowners to tell them new potential homeowners to tell them about various mortgage programs. But then I was thinking, well, they also will want to know who the local daycare is in town or who they can call to get their, you know, lawn mowed and 
and you know certain services like that 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 might be another opportunity to uh, highlight some of our more service oriented businesses so i'm not not to steal your thunder will who's also the chair of <laughs> um nicole go ahead Hi, um, I'd like to ask the business owners on the call, the number one thing that you feel the town or the EDC can do to make your business more successful or grow your business. Anybody want to take on that question first? Go ahead, Mike. Can you find um, male or female individuals that can work? Ooh. Yeah, that will it's actually come best. to work. I mean, all, all I gotta do is just like be here roughly the time they're supposed to, and maybe work f maybe four days out of the five or something like that. That'd be cool. Um, but yeah, it's um, what we are finding in our. I mean, I'm in the service business, but for some reason, um, we nobody can find anybody to help. There's no. I mean, the work's there, but it's getting qualify people that actually care and will come and you know maybe bring a bottle of water with them and maybe be on their cell phone like only half the day uh stuff like that you know if you could somehow put out the word or go to the you know i really want to go to the schools i mean i know they took out a lot of that stuff that i had when i was in school they had automotive they had a carpentry all that stuff they took it all out and, and I understand it's great to go to college. I did, I went, I went from mechanical engineer and I went for about three years, then I switched to plant science and, and I graduated with that. But, you know, going to school is, is great and all, but it's, it's, we're still gonna need people to, you know, physically build your homes and, you know, maybe take your tree down or, you know, and, and you know, we're getting more mechanized in my industry because, you know, we're just doing it ourselves because we can't find any help. So we're going out and buying these big machines and stuff to replace people because there are no people. And, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that is, but all I'm gonna say is if you can find some qualified help, that'd be, that'd be great. That's Mike. fantastic feedback because I think as an EDC, we sit there and we brainstorm how we can be helpful. And I have to honestly say, I'm not remembering a meeting where we actually discuss the fact that finding, um, physical people to do the job is is a challenge so that's fantastic feedback thank you mike yeah I, well, there, thanks mike i appreciate that and nicole you're right and mike that's something that i've been seeing a lot of and, and hearing a lot of that you know workforce is, is really difficult to find right now um and i'm seeing sean down below and i noticed she just put a here. post on facebook regarding trying to find employees for Jake's. So I, I know that's a concern and, and maybe that's something we can work on and, and reach out to the schools and also have a, a listing somewhere on some of our um, social media pages as well. Brett, you know, it's exactly what we were talking about at the educational committee where um, there's, a, there's a very nice concept um, that ties into what we're doing at the farm with veterans and reintegrating um, them into the workforce retraining, but also we have programs for young people. And um, there, I don't know where it's gonna go with um, the school that needs to be rented or sold, but um, there might be an opportunity to do exactly that with um, different groups of young people. Right. Um, in, in, in accordance, you know, in addition to our nonprofit work there at Better Together CT on the farm. And I, that's Dr. Pesher for anybody that um, knows speaking. Um, thank you, Dr. Pesher. Chris Hare, you had your hand up. I did. I just wanted to piggyback on what Mike was saying. It's um, so I own a childcare center in town. And for those of you who don't know me and the, I remember the day, like it was yesterday, March 13th, 2020 um panic arose in the lobby of my center <laughs> and parents were like whoa what do we do and immediately we dropped about 80 80 percent of our enrollment um parents were nervous parents were now working from home um 
I got grief on staying open from some parents because I thought I was becoming a threat to the community. Others, the single moms and the people that still had to go to work were very grateful that we stayed open. Um, so when we lost all the enrollment and then the teachers who were nervous, who left, who the older, older teachers that left and the younger girls who got nervous, they left. There was a core five, six of us <laughs> that were there every day and they worked hard. And three of them were, were young, young girls. And um, I was thanking God for them because they did come to work every day and we just took the necessary precautions and all that. But we're not, we don't pay great. So to find people that want to come to work is tough and when they're getting more staying home because unemployment is paying them more it was hard for us to start back up again when we needed people because they were still getting paid more than they would have gotten paid with us so it's it's a struggle um to hire people that like mike said don't want to just sit on their phones all day or really um i really look to find people that are um are qualified to work with children who have the heart to work with children. You don't necessarily need a college degree to have heart and to be good with kids and families and to keep that going on the positive side. Like it's really been difficult. And I'm looking now because one by one, all these families are starting to come back and looking for the fall. And I don't, I hired one person. I could use at least two full-time staff members because people are ramping up and they have to go back to work. They're having a hard time coming back, going back to work. So I really am looking for some people that really just want to go to work. So it's hard. It's been hard. Um, so I want to piggyback on that. But like, I also, I guess I didn't, maybe I've been out of the loop and I can tell you I've been very stressed over the last year with COVID and all that and having a center open and dealing with so many people in and out like it was really stressful and I was worried the whole time I have three kids of my own a college student a senior in high school and a 12 year old who had a really tough time with the home stuff I was so absorbed with that I didn't know that you guys and the EC the OEC this is the Office of Early Childhood Education was really good to us and they they put on town meetings every week and we talked and they were able to get us some PPE stuff, but I didn't, we were running low. Parents were scrambling around and whenever they saw stuff, they'd buy it. I didn't know that the town was actually giving stuff out. Um, we had to make signs and stuff like that. So I guess I was totally out of the loop. Um, I had talked to Julia at one point, she called just to see how we were doing and checking in and that kind of stuff. Um, Thankfully for the PPP that the government put out, we have been able to stay, but we're still not able to um, meet all of our money, our financials. <clears throat> so I'm worried. PPP. So we started to, yeah, like the, yeah. So we're getting there, but it definitely isn't a quick fix. I can say through the end of this year, we're gonna be still struggling, so. For us, it's really money and marketing um, for employees and yeah, that kind of stuff. So I want to take a call. Chris, did you um, apply for a second draw of PPP? We did. We did. We um, okay. received that. Okay. Um, the only thing, and that pays, um, it goes quick because we pay 10 staff members. So yeah. we get, we pay our payrolls every two weeks. So it's pretty hefty. It didn't, yeah, it sounded like a real lot. And they gave us more the second round, but um, definitely went is and going quickly um, where we're still not even paying, um, I guess, to be honest, our mortgage, like, because the bank is being very, because of the PPP. So, we, so we're nervous, even though all of our, um, enrollment really is starting and I, and I don't I don't mean to say this in a negative way but there's quarantine babe when everyone was in quarantine <laughs> they were also 
enjoying each other and making babies. So we have a laundry, like a long list of enrollment coming through, you know, the beginning of next year that have already, you know, signed up. And so I think we're going to be okay in the long run. I'm just nervous between now and the long run. So um, I have taken down a ton of notes um, from the chamber um, and wrote your names and all that. So I am going to really reach out. Um, but we're on the outskirts of town, so I know that we can get overlooked sometimes. Um, our signage needs to be changed. It's just money. Like, we don't have the money to do extraordinary things to put us out there either, so. Kristen, I know you reached out um, uh, to me at one point when we were talking about different things the town was doing, and you asked about in some um, if the town had any grants through the town and we don't, obviously that's, you know, it's not in our budget and things like that, but that you reaching out was part of the reason that I, we helped think about this process. Actually once, and when Nancy and Sherry spoke about some of the funding and their opportunities there, you came to mind um, because those are resources that I know EDC can do a better job of having for businesses to give the contact information for for businesses when they have those concerns that we can't handle in in North Stonington ourselves on, on the on that so um, one of the things that I could just jump in I'm, I'm sorry to to feed off of Chris's point and um, I think it was Mike who spoke earlier um, EWIB the Eastern Workforce Investment Board is another um, resource agency a lot like you know the chamber and sector who exists to help businesses and um, specifically hiring is one of their key areas. Um, they are stronger and designed for certain industries over others, um, but it would always be worth reaching out. They have a number of programs, including um, you know, on-the-job training. Uh, they have a number of job seekers going through courses. Um, and all of this is, is sort of provided free to the employer. So it depends on the type of skills that you're looking for, but um, they have all kinds of things, subsidized employment, um, labor market information. They do have a jobs board as well that reaches the whole state. Um, they have incumbent worker training, um, employer recruitment. They help facilitate uh, job fairs. So maybe, you know, North Stonington businesses together could come together and have, um, you know, a virtual job fair at the moment. They are doing everything virtually, but um, there may be programs there that could be helpful. Uh, the chamber has a, de a dedicated person who works to support um, job seekers connect with employers. So I'll post our information in the chat um, as well as uh, a link to their website. It's ewib.org. And like I said, they are tailored for certain industries, but at this point it's worth reaching out. Um, and I'll just say again that the chamber also has a jobs board that gets pretty good traction um, in our communications uh, for our members. And as a member, there's no fee to use that service. And take advantage of that, you know, maybe get in touch with the chamber on that advertising uh, program where they match or it's double, right? That's, yeah. It's one-to-one -one right now and it's collaborative. So, you know, every business puts in a little and it becomes a lot more. Okay. Uh, Tony, go ahead. Right. I uh, just want to add that each, uh, under the Recovery Act signed by President Biden, each town state will get a significant amount of money. Now it varies from town to town. Um, I can recite New London's numbers only because I just heard them today. They're going to get 21 million. Um, and uh, I would, if I were, I'm, I'm sure Juliet knows all about this. And But for people like you, Chris, who uh, have really struggled and you have some needs to, to get uh, back up to full pace, um, I would start making a list of needs and work with probably, I presume Juliet, you could be the person Mike or Mike to work with, but uh, Mike, do you know how much you're getting in your town? If you're talking about the rescue package funding, it's about five hundred thousand, but that's but that's you know the the uses for those funds are still outstanding. We're not really sure exactly the guidance there, but yeah, Tony, I think besides that, um, there's a lot of funding. I mean, a lot of it's been discussed here tonight, and there's a lot of stuff out there. I'm Right. thankful for this this discussion and for hearing from our neighbors and um thankful for the edc for putting this on so hopefully we can uh you know try to help in some areas that where there's needs 
Yeah, the regulations haven't been fully developed yet, but um, I would advise that you you start making your lists. I mean, certainly everything will not be appropriate, but there may be some items on your list that would be um, subject to uh, support. Thanks, Tony. I just posted um, or I sent to Juliet the governor's plan on how he's going to deploy his resources that was um, published today. And there is a focus on early childhood needs. There is a focus on small business recovery, not a lot of detail, um, but you know, hundreds of millions of dollars um, that are um, that he announced today. So Juliet, I just sent you all those slideshows and all that information. Um, so in addition to what the town is getting, the state is gonna be deploying a lot of money, including workforce development. Do you know if that would go through the town or would it go directly to the daycare business or? It, it's not quite clear yet. This is still kind of like a high level overview. Um, it was just released uh, today, um, but um, like for ch childcare development block grants, um, there's some money, 106 million, 170 million for childcare stabilization. And that seems to be, Christine, some of the things you were speaking about. Um, Corona relief supplemental funds, another 70 million. Um, so there's a there's a, a lot in here. Um, there's also, and I know that um, Jennifer had heard about this, some uh, some post some workforce training uh, dollars that are being released, um, specifically around information technology. Um, let's see, under small business, uh, there is. Sorry, I can't find the exact small business, but there's a lot of um, uh, of support being. Uh, uh, considered for small business, particularly those that are minority, women, or veteran owned. Um, so focus on those. So I think you can see, you'll see over the next uh, week or so, some more detail coming out about this. And I'm sure, Mike, uh, you'd probably be the first to hear. Um, I'm sure the municipalities will be the first to hear. Thank you. And we are running out of time, but we can stay a little longer to continue the conversation. I know a few um, the EDC members and I think um, Selectman Carlson have to jump off in a minute to go to another meeting. Um, but Sean, I, I see you on here and I, I know you're one of the, the restaurant owners in town, a few that have popped on, but how has the outdoor seating helped during this time? And um, I don't know, Juliet, if we know how that's going to proceed in the future once the governor's orders end, but how has that helped your business or is that something that you see as a need to continue um, in, at least in the short term? Yeah, so last year um, it was very beneficial because we couldn't go 100% inside. So um, when we reopened, we basically used the outside to um, have 100% seating with, between the inside and the outside. And so it was really helpful and people really enjoyed it. Um, and this year, we're gonna try to do everything again. We are gonna do everything again. We're setting up and planning for that right now um, so that we can like, basically recoup <laughs> from last year and also grow as a business here. Um, you know, We were only in business for just over a year when COVID hit and we shut down, um, so yeah, it's been very helpful and we look forward to doing it again this year. And I've spoken to Juliet a little bit about it. And so um, we are moving forward with those plans currently. Yeah, and with one of the, the, the initiative that Brett spoke of briefly is, I'd like to get the landscapers to help reestablish the landscape uh, sort of border between these businesses and Route 2 so that they can put tables out there, you know, in their their lawn areas, basically, there's three or four restaurants there that want to do that, while you know making it a little more more of a barrier between Route Two, but but a good way to advertise the landscaping businesses that choose to participate and just create a nice sort of downtown feel in that strip, starting with Jake's and going all the way to the Red Onion. So I, right. I do want to get that moving. I know everybody's busy, but. Yeah, and that, and that is on our current agenda to get that moving. Um, and Sean, I, I appreciate you bringing up the point that not only did it help you through that period, but you're hoping it helps, you know, catch you up on some of the lost revenue from last year. I, I think sometimes we don't think about it that way. And it's a, it's a good way to 
for at least EDC to try to work with Juliet and planning and zoning to, to say, this is why we need this to continue. And how do we, we allow that to continue? Because it, it is about making up for lost business over you know, a year and a half so far. Um, and, and the restaurants in our town have, have really struggled. Um, I know Press On isn't on here, but that was one of his concerns is that with the size of his his restaurant, he can't open up inside yet, and he doesn't know when that would happen. So he's hoping that the outdoor seating in Holly Green actually continues and helps. So um, I know Juliet's been working on that, and the, and EDC will be working on the um, the pathway and and, and moving that well, forward. Get permanent, you know. Like I said, we've run up with some a few struggles with um, the health department on that, but. Uh, because it expands seating and then you have to figure out what your system can handle. But we have to find a way in, in order, if, if businesses want to add an outdoor space and we can do that safely, then I think it's something that should continue. And I fully anticipate the Planning and Zoning Commission will be on board with that, so. Yeah, I agree. Is there any other questions out there, or discussions people would like to uh, bring up before we bring this to wrap? We have JC from Trillium and Frank Zano, I think, was on the line at one point. Yeah, I just saw them following. Uh, Chris, you raised your hand again. Yes, Go sir. Uh, I just wanted to, since we have a forum of people, uh, we are uh, looking for engineers and carpenters at uh, my office to hire if anybody knows of some people that would have that qualification. Uh, we will train them if they have any type of AutoCAD or computer experience. Um, but we're, we're having the same problem as everybody else finding uh, help. It seems to be the theme. I would, for those especially, I'd highly recommend and echo what Megan had said about um, reaching out to the Workforce Investment Board. They have uh, training, six week training sessions. A lot of it is manufacturing based, but I know CAD um, and uh, that type of design work was one of the focus areas. Don't think carpentry was so much, um, but definitely welding and pipe fitting and a lot of the other programs. So it's really worth reaching out. Um, if you go to ewib.org, on the top of the page, there's a uh, manufacturing pipeline initiative uh, link, MPI, um, and it'll give you a lot of information. And these are people that are trained already for you free of charge. Um, and the stats show that they tend to have a 50% higher retention rate and 50% lower ongoing training rate once to hit the workforce. That's the quality of the training that they um, receive. Frank, you also own the, the, the big property at the Rotary now. Yes. Um, how has that marketing been to try to find someone for that property? Uh, it is our, one of our largest and most you know, uh, <laughs> visible commercial properties in town. Yeah, it's um, it, the COVID killed me with uh, trying to rent office space in the back building uh, because everybody went remote. And then medical office, I tried to get the state to consider my building that's 40,000 square feet, which is all medical for a testing center or COVID vaccination center. I tried for a year and uh, with Yale New Haven and I gave up on that. Um, it seemed like they wanted to build tents more than they wanted to actually have a building to uh, do it in. So uh, yeah, COVID, COVID's been difficult trying to rent anything. Uh, we've got about 60,000 square feet of empty buildings back there. About 20,000 20, is occupied. And we should put you on site finder then, you know. I was gonna say, Juliet, if you guys don't have a membership, we'll put it on through our membership for free. Yeah, I think it's free right now too for us. Oh, is it free? Okay. No, that's right. They're, they're studying it to municipalities. So either between sector or through the town, we're happy to post those for you. Thank you. I, I just have to get with you, Frank, because there's a lot of information that they ask it, that I I started to do yours, but I don't know all the information. So okay. I need to, I'll, yeah, I'll be more than happy to sit with you. Okay, great. All right, great. Thank you. Uh, Christine here. I kind of forgot my question, but um, I know this doesn't really um, have to do with this meeting right now, but what is for what is for sale right next to me, between uh, me and Cedar Park? 
All that land is for sale there, Julia? Yeah, there's a 10 acre parcel of that. Uh, I think it just sold actually. Oh, so, really? Because yeah. we keep seeing people in the woods. <laughs> yeah, they have to do their survey work right now. Where they, is it's really wetlands. Do you know any idea what's going to go there or? Um, a material supply store, That's like building materials. It's like a small warehouse distribution type thing. So it's not going to be like a Target. No, no. no but is it going to be like a like um like a come and go thing, or is it like a building? I I can offer full details. I'm not sure if it's uh, public yet. So I know who it is. I don't. I wouldn't worry. We were just wondering because we're like, yeah. there's people like really right on our rock wall. <laughs> So, yeah, so they have to do they have to do their initial survey work for the site. Yeah, and I'm sure that's a concern with the child with your child care right there. So don't panic. Stay <laughs> in touch with Juliet and uh, <laughs> she can work. Yeah, with it's you kind know. of concerning on what's going to go right there because I thought for sure because it's so wet, no one would ever want to even buy it. So, <laughs> but that's okay. There's quite a few businesses coming to North Stonington that Juliet's been working on. So things things are still moving and. You know, I, I think that we're still going to be in the one number one or two top spots for economic growth. Uh, there was one town that beat us out, but it was, I think they have one business and it really <laughs> made them skyrocket over us percentage wise. But the uh, street, Frank, I was all for you guys doing whatever over there. I just, I didn't know who, it, who owned it, but um, yeah, I'm, really up for stuff right around me you know definitely and I'm sure that Mike Christie is too like yeah because it'll bring people you know usually want to be really close to their child care centers to their kids and so that I mean it could be good news you know yeah um, well like, if, then, if you want if you want baked sourdough bread freshly made that's where to buy it <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna tell you about that stop talking <laughs> Very good. Um, well, I thank everyone for coming out tonight um, in participating, well, not coming out, like just turning on your computer, I guess, and joining us tonight. Um, we, we hope to do this more often um, and, and really start that conversation. But I can tell you from having sector here, the chamber, um, it's something where we do need to have a little more business resources for businesses in town to, to be able to give out um, the contact information in the programs that um, sector and the chamber offer, um, because I think it is very beneficial to our business owners to know that. And um, that's something we'll be working on as well. Um, so can you make sure I'm in the loop too, Brett, like on any, I don't know how I miss, I miss so much. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, COVID Brett, was tough Brett, for a lot of we'll people. Talk, but that, try to get a better list, you know, just, whether the our whole EDC just has to divide and conquer and call each business. I'm, I can be I'll, information. I'll join in to help, like not yeah. just to, you know. And, and that's one of the reasons for the business directory too, not only just to to provide that information to residents and about what we have here, but also have a an, an accurate mail list. So when events like this take place, we can make sure we reach out to everybody. Um, Years ago, we did have a big group of people on the business committee, I yeah. remember. Yeah, the committee. business association back then. Yeah, yeah, that was really cool. So I wouldn't mind stirring something up like that again too. Okay. So. Well, thank you everyone. I appreciate everyone attending. Thank you for the chamber for um, hosting the um, Zoom for us. And thanks for Sector for explaining all the benefits that you guys provide. Um, I, I think it's always great to know and you guys are more than welcome to um, address EDC and, and ask us to, to move your message forward. We appreciate all the help you guys provide. And I'll take yeah, that. Thank you to the chamber and to you. We'll take this Thanks feedback from these two groups too to see what we can come up with with them. Obviously finding employees, you know, some of the labor shortage issues, I'll get to work on that, so. Very good. And if anybody thinks of anything else, feel free to email Juliet or myself and uh, we can address it during one of our meetings and uh, get answers and, and, and help out any way we can. Um, and Heather and, and Greg also said, if any business needs to talk to them direct, just reach out and um, I can provide their contact information or um, 
whatever it might be neat, but they're always open to, to, to hear from the resident, which is great. Greg was um, very attentive to me during this too. Like uh, we, well, we both went to Stonington, so we kind of know each other. Uh, he was very helpful and like checked in on me every week. And like, he's just phenomenal. Like he's really helpful. He's put me in contact with other businesses out of town and how they're doing. And so he, he is true to his word for sure. He is. Well, Happy we appreciate it. I just want to say, since this meeting is being recorded and everybody watching after the fact on demand, wherever this reaches, um, won't have the access to the chat. I did just want to say to reach the chamber, um, is it chamberect.com or info at chamberect.com. I also posted in the chat that the chamber has a small supply of complimentary um, cotton fabric masks at our office in Waterford. Um, so if you are still in need of that kind of thing, they're not my favorite masks, but they're masks nonetheless. Um, please give us a call. Um, and Brett, if you wanted to share any of the, the contact information just for the sake of getting it on the recording, I'd encourage you to do that. Okay, great. Thank you for editing that. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to put my email address on there if anybody needs out to reach out to me or any questions for the town. And my email is on the town website at northstonington.org. Sector is sector at sector.org. Um, or sector.org is the website, S-E-C-T-E-R. Great idea, Megan. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Talk to you soon.